good. Okay, so for this um, Alex problem, we're looking at zero order. So the topic tells me that, but it also says so in the problem. And that's important information because it guides us um, in which direction we, we need to go with our equations. So zero order, it gives us the reactions. This is a really, really popular reaction. We're gonna see it a lot this semester. And it gives us the rate constant. So when it says rate constant, which variable is that? Okay. Okay. And so this, these units, like we were just saying a second ago, these units tell us quite a bit about what's happening. If we really wanted to pick it apart, we could, we could figure out what reaction order it is overall. Um, it ends up being zero. That's what uh, molarity per second means. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with the lecture notes real quick so we can find the right equations. Can you hear my daughter? A little bit, but it's not. Okay. Yeah. So there's this slide about zero order reactions. And in my lecture videos, we go into like what it means and how you can interpret the graphs. The graphs are more helpful in like, in like practical sense, but we already know that it's zero order because the problem gives us that. So our integrated rate law looks like this. It's just the rate equals K. It's not even actually integrated because there's no change happening. It's just, rate equals K. And so when we go back, uh, you can, I think I have to stop sharing, hold on. You can share your problem again. Okay, when we look at this, um, we need to understand that the rate of the reaction is equal to K. So when it says rate constant is K, it means that's the rate. Uh, I don't know why it's dragging. So it does more when uh, I'm annotating than it does on the whiteboard, but I'm trying to move our pictures. There we go. So actually just help with that. No, they're in different places for each person. They don't show when you share your screen. It's wherever yours are different than where mine are. Um, so to know how much is left after two seconds, uh, all, we, all we have to do is multiply whatever we started with, in this case, 100 millimolars, millimoles, not molar, of ammonia, that's our NH3. And so at, it's gonna be consumed at a rate of 0 0.002 seconds molarity per second. So I'm gonna turn this into molarity so that you know my units are going to match they're going to they're going to like cancel out what is that that'll be 20 and since it's millimoles it's going to be um it's actually 3 2 sig figs cuz 5.0 so 20 point millimolar if you don't like millimolar, um, it's fine to convert that away. So we're just gonna do that like we would for milliliters, right? So it'll be thousand millimolar for every one molar. It's the same idea as milliliters and liters. Uh, so in terms of molarity, that's our starting molarity right there. So they just buried in some unit conversions in there for us to do, yay. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds later means if I take my rate and multiply it by the time, we'll get the total molarity that is consumed in this case, because we're talking about ammonia, right? So ammonia is going to be used up. So we'll just go 0 0.026 or 0 0.0026 times your two seconds. So we find out that a change of a degradation, if you will. That's what this is. It's decomposition. 0 0.0052 molar is our change. Uh, so if the problem asked how much nitrogen is produced, you could do the stoichiometry after that. You know how much of the ammonia was used up 
So you could then use your molar ratio to really ammonia to nitrogen, and then you'd be able to figure out how much nitrogen is made. You could do the same thing with hydrogen as well. So that's another type of problem we might have. Here, this one is asking us um, essentially how much is left. Yeah, how much is left. So we're just going to take the amount that was used up and subtract. And so your units do have to match when you're subtracting, right? So that's the trick there. We couldn't use millimole on top and then moles on the bottom. So you might also call that 14.8 millimolar. Either way, it's the same thing. Um, It says how much is left. So I am wondering if they might want to have the answer in terms of just moles instead of molar, in which case I'm assuming the flask hasn't changed size. So we could do that dimensional analysis if we needed to, you know, just like this. So we could figure out that there's sometimes how much is pretty vague, right? It could mean molar, it could be molarity, could be grams. <laughs> So giving us some options here. That's a four. Fours particularly don't show up well on this tablet. So I'm not sure which format it wants the answer in, but all of those are valid answers from my perspective. Oh, OK. I'm sorry, I just got a little bit behind. <laughs> not sure that I was like understanding it, but <clears throat> OK. Yep, understood. I see. 